All right. So lately I've been seeing a lot of things with aim labs, uh, in my, in my feed on YouTube. And a lot of the stuff is kind of dated already, like from ranging from a few months ago to almost a year ago now, but it's usually aim labs related. And it's usually talking about, Hey, aim labs bad for you. If you want to get good at game, play game, play game equals better, better rank means better. And better rank means flex on people and share your opinions and your comments going, oh, yeah, I am immortal 300 and I'm top two in the world right now, which means I'm better than you. And I'm totally not just cheating. Um, yeah, gamer, MLG, Doritos, Mountain Dew, Baja, I don't know anymore, dude, monster, fucking something. Anyways. So yeah, I've been seeing a lot of stuff like that where it's like, oh, don't play aim labs. Uh, aim labs makes you worse at a game because you don't practice so and so mechanic or this and that. Or if you're a Counter Strike player, you don't practice Counter Strafing. You're a Fallon player, you don't practice your 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 flying in the air with your jet kunais or your your lineups. And well, that applies to both games. If you're a COD player, oh, you don't practice jump shooting or you don't practice. Uh, uh, target switching because target switching in call of duty is so different because call of duty rigs your gameplay if you get anywhere more than four kills a match um but yeah like you know a lot of a lot of games have their pros and cons and a lot of games you know help and some games don't and that's the same with aim labs aim labs helps the thing is is that when you when you bring up aim labs to any non aim lab person or any kovac fanatic it's that aim lab bad because aim lab don't make you aim well aim lab circle too big aim lab circle so big that you aim bad so equals aim bad lab when yes there is a um there is some truth to that but that's why you're playing kovacs if you're a kovacs fanatic so you're still doing the same thing Aim Labs is just a free to play um aiming benchmark a aiming a human aiming benchmark for yourself on Steam. That's it. This video is not sponsored nothing like that. None of that. I'm just saying it's free. There's an optional subscription thing. I recommend not worrying about it. The subscription stuff, it doesn't really matter unless you care about skins or you care about what they offer but if you don't don't bother with it you don't need it it's just there to be there every game has to make money somehow and this is their version of monetization it doesn't make you go skin equal skill maybe for some people not for me so i have like a few points here uh, written down so I could somewhat make this structured and I don't just go on a 20 minute tangent about one topic. And it's that is aim labs bad aim labs. Like I've said, this is going to be like the third time I've said this now is not bad. Aim labs is good because it is free and because it is free, it makes it good. Why does this even correlate with it's with anything is that it's because it helps people that don't want to drop money on an aim benchmark game cough cough kovacs uh when you don't have the intent of playing it like you religiously care about it so aim labs is good for the is good for the casual is what i'm saying aim labs is good for the casual player that just wants to slightly improve a better than average or better than they previously were in order to get a step up in their game, or at least in their aim game, mouse and keyboard or controller alike. That's why aim labs isn't bad. And aim labs, yes, there's ranked, like you could see on screen right now. And this is my current rank stat. Do I play this every day? No, I play this just often enough that I actually improve. I don't religiously grind this game 24 seven uh, no lifing it just to get the best stats in the world. I don't care, nor does the person with a with the number one stat in the world care about my playthrough. Um, so yeah, I'm an average Joe, and I'm assuming that you are too. Maybe you're better than me. That's perfectly fine. So, 
Aim Labs is bad? No. Aim Labs good for casual. No movement practice in Aim Labs. And how is this an issue? So if you care about movement prac, by the way, uh, you're probably kind of dumb because you would already know to boot up your game and practice movement prac. How do you practice super gliding in Apex? You open up the you open up the game and you practice. You can open up the uh, the super glide tester on the browser that exists, but it's not the same. The latency of your GPU or of your APU, if you're on you know a laptop or a non dedicated graphics card um, or non discrete graphics card user, quote unquote discrete, because graphics cards are huge nowadays. Um, yeah, if you're not on the PC, if you're on console and you want to practice super gliding in Apex Legends, you open up the game and you practice super gliding. You practice tap strafing. You practice uh, lurching. You practice snake snaking if you want to practice snaking. Um, yeah, so you just open the game. You put hundreds of hours into practicing that. And some people get it down within the first 20 minutes. Some people get it down within the first 20 minutes and forget in the next 20 minutes. And then the next time they try it again, it takes them seven, 70 minutes. It could take two hours. It could take seven hours. It could take 400 hours to learn how to tap strafe and how to coordinate your fingers to, 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 to do very, you know, simple tasks. But you have to chain a whole bunch of them in a specific way. On top of that, you have to learn how to aim while chaining all these tasks which is very hard i will say even as a person that loves movement and i love aim i love the technicalities of it i am not the best at it so no movement prac equals aim lab bad no aim lab is an aim benchmark practice your aim get good at aim and then practice aim with movement integrate aim with movement break it up into pieces don't slam it don't take it pile it all up and then slam it down your throat and expect yourself to be able to understand it Try to break it up into pieces like studying. You're bad at games other than aim labs, as in you play way too much aim labs now and you don't play any other games. This is a problem that happens in two very distinct communities that are very similar to each other. Aim labs or aim training community and osu, the rhythm game, the Japanese rhythm game where you click circles and you sometimes hear anime girls screaming. These two programs have something that are that are very common with each other is that you technically, technically practice aim. Osu is not an aim trainer. Osu is a rhythm game. Osu practice. Osu is honestly practicing looting in a death box in Apex. If I had to if I had to precisely demonstrate what osu is and how it affects your ability to aim it's practicing how to loot a death box in apex as fast as you can that's literally what it is you're not practicing aiming you're practicing moving your cursor on a 2d plane and it doesn't give the 3d effect meaning that your cursor and your sensitivity stay super consistent the entire time the range of motion the actions are all similar but it's because it works on a 2d plane that it doesn't actually practice aiming you practice surfing your screen that it, it doesn't make sense but it makes sense in my head and it makes sense in in a weird way it's very hard to explain you're, you're practicing looting in PUBG. that's another way of putting it you're practicing looting in PUBG. you're not practicing using the car 98 the aug the ak you're not practicing recoil you're practicing clicking things on or opening as many tabs as you can without actually pressing control uh, was it n i believe to open a new tab yeah that's basically what it is now why are you bad and why are you bad kind of goes in many different ways like why are you bad at aim labs but you're good at regular games or why are you good at regular game or why are you bad at regular games but good at aim labs if you're bad at aim labs, it probably means that your Dude, brain like, like, is trying to do too board. many commands at once or you're so used to these twitchy shooters that you play to the point that you you want more twitchiness. You crave the twitchiness. You're like you're like adrenaline junkie mode. But then you play aim labs and it's like zen. There's nothing to it. You're clicking these dots. Whatever color these dots are, you're clicking these dots. You're tracking these little beams. You're basically tracking Fall Guys characters. 
And that's what you do for hours and hours. You get bored. So then you're like, okay, I'm bad at this now. Why? Because either one, you can't take it seriously or two, you took it too seriously. And now you can't take it seriously. The The second one kind of, kind of doesn't make sense, but it's like if you were to take a sport so seriously, but then nobody around you takes that sport seriously. And now you're just like, well, what's the point of taking it seriously? I'm just going to meme now. I'm just going to meme in my game now because everyone's trash and I could just meme and do well still. So Amwebs sometimes does give that effect off to some people, not everyone. But some people go, oh, this is too easy, so I'm not going to try anymore. And then you start laying back in your chair. You start slouching or slopping over. You start aiming with your left hand instead of your right hand or vice versa. You start, I don't know, you start aiming with the keyboard. You start aiming with, with the trackpad because it's funny. And then you kind of get bad. And you're, it's not the same anymore. Or the other way. You see, haha, Dot doesn't look like real players, so I can't really take it seriously. It's just, it doesn't work. Or or you're like me when I first started Dame Labs. But a player's head can never be this high on my screen. Well, yes, it can. It's just a different scenario. Maybe the players camping up on top of a rafter that you have to physically turn your screen to look up shoot at turn left right do a whole circle circle thing because maybe you're not tracking a player anymore maybe you're tracking a, a plane maybe you're tracking a car maybe you're tracking a i don't know a spaceship a missile something that's flying in the air and then it does like weird patterns and it comes down and strikes you maybe you're maybe you're tracking something similar to that maybe not a player but aim labs and you know aim benchmarks you get to learn what you're bad at and whenever you find something you're bad at like me i'm not as good I'm not that good at speed clicking and uh, flicking. Like flicking and switching, I'm not that good at tracking. I could do just fine. Like when I'm warmed up and I'm really ready to rumble, I could do tracking just fine. Another point is kind of similar to the first one, and it's what do I use aim labs for when I have a game to play? So let's say you're a dedicated Valorant or a Siege fan or, you know, game of choice take a game of choice replace it with the with what i'm about to say so take a game of choice and then go well why play aim labs when i have my game and that's because aim labs again it's a benchmark it's a benchmark and could be a competition to any uh, any other online peers your friends list or worldwide sure but at its core it's hey i'm trying to find what i'm bad at and aim labs will help me with that let's say you're a mouse and keyboard in the modern call of duty age where aim assist literally move the left joystick and you will lock on to a player let's say you're like that and you're playing against robots like me i play mouse and keyboard against robots all the time um well something like tracking and switching the tracking and switching uh, scenarios for ranked or unranked will will be highly beneficial to you because that's what you'll practice you practice a lot of target switching in call of duty and we're realizing that hey let's say your gun's bullet velocity is not that good because there's so many variables in call of duty and oh my bullet velocity is not that good okay so i have to compensate a little bit i have to let the recoil take my gun a little up and then i have to start moving my hand left or right and i have to move for every single bullet because clearly when you play with mouse and keyboard in Call of Duty, it is not the same as playing as um, controller. And it is quite literally a skill issue. And then this final thing that I can think of um, that, I, that I've written down here is I'm bored of clicking dots. And this is kind of what I touched on earlier. It's like, if you're an adrenaline junkie or if you enjoy spamming or if you enjoy doing like crazy shit on screen, like, you're going to get bored of clicking dots. Clicking these dots is boring. It's very boring. But if you are mindful with how you click these dots, like, let's say, hmm, dot is on the top left. I want to go to the next dot, which is in the middle, is on the same row, but it's in the middle. All right. So I'm going to go click my dot, click the middle dot, click the dot below that. Now... You do all that, and then another dot shows up above that lower dot that you just clicked, and you're like, should I click that dot 
or should I click another dot that's a little bit closer? And then you have to make the conscious decision. Click the dot that's closer. It's exactly like that. It's your you gotta like try to use your brain to 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 make it fun. You gotta trick your brain into thinking that it's kind of fun to press these dots. Cause if you don't, it will get really boring and it will be it'll feel like you're wasting your time. Like, oh, I could just be playing another game and doing all of this and uh I would be so much better and this and that and blah, 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 blah. but it's like yes, but no. You have to sit down and actually analyze what are you doing wrong when you switch to a dot? Do you over flick? Do you over micro correct? Or are you like me and you do everything? And in fact, my my flicking is so bad because I actually aim on target. And when I go to click my mouse button, I aim off target. It's like it's like I'm perceiving that because my cursor is on my target, I have already clicked. For some reason, my brain just works like that. It goes, oh, your cursor was already on him. You don't need to click. Oh, wait a minute. You forgot to click. So click now. And by the time my brain registers that, I am off target already. So that is my biggest issue with flicking. Your issue may be different. You may have... Let's say target switching, you switch from one target to another target. And by the time you're switching, either your switching is too slow, your switching is too fast, and the target, like let's say it's a moving target, the target didn't even get there, you clicked already, shot your bullet, you're playing a game with single a first shot accuracy like Counter-Strike, Valorant, Apex, Call of Duty. Um, yeah, good luck with that. Because chances are you're not going to recover from that. Once you shoot, once you miss your first shot, you have like a fifty percent chance of recovering from it. The average the average player has like a fifty percent chance of recovering from it, and that is not even that's not even counting like stressful situations where it's like you miss a shot on the easiest shot and everyone starts making fun of you, like oh no this guy's ass, and then you kind of listen to that and you're like oh wait a minute like maybe he's right or maybe it's like oh god damn it I'm so bad at this game I can't do this anymore and then you lose focus and then you die. That's usually how it is for me. For you, it may be different. But yeah. I think 20 minutes of me talking like this um, with a very blank aim lab screen uh, is more than enough. It's more than enough for me to get my point across here. And yeah, so this is a very simple video. Anyone that has stayed for this whole 20 minutes to use this or use this entire, you know, video as a... Uh, as a sort of background noise, I do appreciate it. And uh, yeah, let, let me know if you agree or if you disagree or if you want to rage at me because, I don't know, I said something that triggered you. Yeah, go ahead, put down some comments below. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.